This is for any music coaches, creative coaches, music, dance, photo, video, or really any sort of online coaching program. I want to help you decide on how to choose the pricing and what to charge your clients. This may break your brain a little bit if you're not used to this, because I want to give you a different perspective on how you should charge so that you can, first of all, make more money. You can make more impact on your clients because you have them put more skin in the game and you can disconnect your time from your income. So to show you really quickly this graph, this is your client. They are currently in a sad place because they need help. And they come to you because they believe that you can help them get a, to a certain goal that they want for themselves. So notice that they are not coming to you because they want to hang out with you, because they want to buy your time, because they just think you're really cool. They may think those things, but at the end of the day, what's most important is that they get to their goal. So instead of selling your time and saying $200 per hour, I'm going to show you how to charge in a different way so that you can get them to this goal. And that way you don't have to sell your time because selling your time sucks, right? Selling your time is, hey, I have to show up or I'm not going to get paid. And no matter how much you decide to change this number, this could be $2,000 per hour. It could be $20,000 per hour. Doesn't really matter. You still have to show up. And so your time is attached to your earning potential. So I'm going to show you how to disconnect that. Okay. So again, this is how you get paid your worth without selling more time. And most models are like this. They charge hourly. There is a time ceiling when you charge hourly. We only have 24 hours a day. I have 24 hours. You have 24 hours. Elon Musk has 24 hours. Tim Cook has 24 hours. We all just use it a little bit differently. And if you have, we, if we all only have 24 hours, we can only charge for 24 hours amount of work. The income is where it can fluctuate, but the time does not fluctuate. And attaching your income to a limited source is not the, the most brightest thing to do. Like, why would you do that, right? If you have so much physical capability, if you only have so much time, why would you charge the, um, why would you attach the amount of money you have to that? Something that you want to grow exponentially, why would you attach it to a limited source? Ask yourself that. This is a hundred percent nine to five mentality. And that's okay, because I used to think that way as well, but I just want to challenge you to break that belief and think in different ways if you want to earn different types of money. You want to earn like the 1%, the 5%, or if you want to earn like the general public, then you want to think like the general public. So it's up to you to decide, but I want to show you how to think more of the, the more like the 5%, the 1%. I don't know if you've ever like broken things down this way, but I remember when I worked at nine to five and I was working a job, I would think about if I bought something, right? Like if I bought a video game that was like $60, I'd be like, that's like three hours worth of work. And this is just how we think when we are an employee and have that nine to five mentality. We think of things in terms of how much we get paid per hour. And if we think like that, we're always going to be limited again because of the ceilings to income and time. So here's the truth. People don't want to buy your time. They, they only buy your time because they believe if they do, you're their best bet at getting to an outcome that they want for themselves. If you teach guitar, they're not buying your time because they want to hang out with you. They're buying your time because they think that you can help them play guitar at the level that they want. So you just got to remember this. They're not buying your time. They're not buying your courses. They're not buying your coaching. They're not buying lessons. They're buying an outcome that is important to them. Now, some of these things may be necessary to be able to get them to this outcome, but they're not buying into that stuff. They're only doing that stuff because they believe they can get to an outcome. Believe me, if they could snap their fingers and have that outcome with skipping all the courses, the coaching and spending all the time, they would do it. Like, would you do it? Automatically, every time there was something that you wanted and you could snap your fingers and make it happen. Would you do that or would you rather go through courses? So... That's the thing, like a lot of people sell features, right? They're like, you're gonna get like 800 lessons, there's like 14 hours of modules, and you're gonna be able to get all this cool information. But at the end of the day, that's not really what they want. They hear things like that and they're like, that sounds like a lot of work. Like truthfully, they hear that in the back of the mind, they're like, man, I have to watch that much content. I have to take that much time just to watch things and not even, you know what I mean? So we wanna make it sound like not work. We wanna make it sound like just what they want, which is the outcome. So that's selling your time. This is the nine to five mentality. This is the way that you get stuck with your income. This is a better model. You charge based on the impact of the outcome once they've completed your process. 
Meaning that if you have a program, if you have a course, if you do lessons, whatever it is, you charge them based on the impact that that has on their lives or their careers once they're done working with you. This is perceived as more valuable to them. So if you gave them a true outcome that they wanted and you sold them that and you marketed around that in all your ads, you were talking about this is the outcome that you get instead of what everybody else does, which is like, you're going to get all this time with me. I've had all these accolades. I've worked with Bach. I've worked with Beethoven. Like people don't care about that stuff. They look at that and they're like, yes, that is good for you. And that does show that you know what you're doing. But at the end of the day, the burning question in the back of their head is like, what does that do for me? Because everybody has their own selfish reasons for doing things. I do, you do, next guy does, no matter how much we want to admit it. But they work with you because they want something for themselves. So why not just sell them what they're going to get? Because to them, it's more valuable than your time anyways. Then you can charge more money for that. And so that's how you detach your time from your earning potential. Because once you know the outcome, you can start automating your process by putting in courses, by putting in you know, zaps and all this automation. We're in, we're in 2024 right now. Like there's a lot of automation that we can use to our advantage or we can delegate these things. So if we build it up to a certain point where we can actually hand it off to somebody else to coach for you, somebody else to take the sales calls for you. And if we systematize it, then these three things help our clients get the outcome without attaching our time to it. Does that make sense? The outcome is all they want. The method doesn't matter as long as they get what they wanted, what they came for, which is the outcome, right? So if I told you, hey, you can play guitar, like these are the examples that I kind of wrote down. I help guitar players play solos better so that they can land lead guitar roles and rock bands. So if I promised you, you could get that and I had a system and a way to do it, it wouldn't matter if I spent 13 hours with you. It doesn't matter if I spent 50 hours with you. It doesn't matter if you watched it in a course. None of that matters as long as you can get to the outcome and you want clear outcomes like this. It's not like, oh, I'm going to show you how to play guitar better. You're going to be able to think better. Like none of that is clear. That's not measurable. If you told somebody, I'm not only going to teach you how to like play guitar, but you're also going to be able to like know how to think and like make decisions and like the, you'll feel better about yourself. Like none of that is measurable. If you want a clear outcome for someone to understand, it has to be very dead simple and it has to be exactly what they want. So it's, if it's, I help guitar players play solos better so they can land lead guitar in rock bands, their outcome they want is to be able to land a lead guitar role in a rock band. <laughs> so you're going to teach them these things to get them there, right? I help singer songwriters with stage confidence, book their first headlining show and sell at least 50 tickets. That is monumental for somebody who wants to do this as a career and someone who's dead serious about this, right? I help music producers make music that attracts artists and show them how to sell it. So I didn't say, I'm going to show music producers how to make beats. It's like, yeah, that's an outcome and that's cool and all. And I think that can help me, but it's just not clear. Whereas if I said, I can show you how to make beats that actually attract artists and show you how to sell it to them. It's like, that makes complete sense. And that's very valuable, right? Because if you can help somebody do this, let's just say, and they make $3,000 per month, which isn't a whole lot of money, but over the year, like how much money is that? Over two years, how much money is that? Over a career, how much money is that? And it doesn't even have to be financial. If they can land their dream job to be able to play in a band and tour and you know live that lifestyle of being that rock star, like what is that worth to somebody? So this is where you can start attaching a high ticket price to getting this outcome versus just trading your time. So if you got someone an entire career or you sold someone their first shows and all like all this stuff, right? They have the confidence to be able to do it whenever they want. They have the methods to be able to sell out tickets whenever they want. What's that worth? If you said it was $3,000 to do that to somebody who truly cares about their career and really wants to do this, it would be an absolute no brainer because the value needs to always be much greater than what you ask for. So something worth buying, always a better deal for them. It's always a better deal for the client, the prospect, the student. The value should always be greater than the dollar amount that's in asked for in return. So if you ask for a dollar, you should be giving them $3, $10 worth of value. If you ask them for a hundred, you should give them $1,000 worth of value. If you ask for 10,000, you should give them $100,000 worth of value. 
Okay. So if you can make them a hundred thousand dollars a year booking out shows and you charge them the 10,000, it's still a no brainer. It's up to you to be able to describe and uncover that value well enough for them to understand that in their mind though. Right. And so this is how you charge more money. You make it a no brainer compared to what you're giving them in return. You should always give way more than what you ask for. And the amount you take can always increase as you give more value. So if you get better at getting people to 100K a year, you can get them to 200K a year. Guess what? Your price can go up to 20K instead of 10K. So your price can keep going higher and higher as long as what you give them continues to raise as well. I want to give you this other frame to think about. There's always a generalist and there's always a specialist. The generalist is good at everything or decent at everything. And the specialist is an absolute machine at that one thing. So I want to give you an example to think about. If you had a hole in your roof, water was leaking, like rain was coming in, it was destroying your ceiling, it was destroying your bathroom, it was destroying your PS5, all your electronics, your wiring in your house, all messed up. Would you pay a handyman who says, hey, I fix your toilet, I can fix your sink, I can probably fix your Wi-Fi, I could probably fix the, you know, that little like your mouse problem oh yeah i can also fix the hole in your roof yeah definitely and they charge you let's just say 500 dollars, just to make it easy would you pay him 500 dollars, or would you rather call a company that specializes in roofing to fix it for you now remember what's on the line is like your entire household all your electricals everything you've ever owned and they charge you a thousand dollars like, who would you rather pay? Would you rather pay the handyman who fixes everything and there could be potential issues later? Or would you pay the roofing company who ensures exactly what they do? They know what they're doing. They have insurance on it. Everything's covered. They make sure it's all good. Which one's worth more? The specialist. The same thing with the doctor. If you had cancer, and you, would you go to a general doctor who mostly, like, diagnoses what you have and sends you to a specialist? Or would you want to go to an oncologist? If you were having open brain surgery, would you have the general doctor do it or the guy that does this a million times a day and only focuses on that? Guess who makes more? The specialist always makes more. So if you are the specialist, you can systemize, you can systematize your process versus creating a new curriculum for each student. You're probably going through this if you teach music lessons, but every student that comes in the door is at a different level. They learn differently. They need to know different things. And so you end up creating all these curriculums for each individual. How do you do that at scale? If you had 500 students, like how would you do that? And if you gave them one-on-one -on -one attention, how many hours in the day would you be able to have to do that? So if you want to specialize, you can actually systematize your process. And what you can do instead of catering to everybody is you can attract the people who want to buy what you already have instead of chasing and pandering to each individual. And what I mean by that is if you know how to take someone from zero to a hundred and you have a systematic way that can be replicated each and every time, you can bring someone in and send them through that machine. That way they come out with the result each time. That way you just have to attract the people. You can put up ads and say, hey, this is exactly what I help this exact person with. Do this exact thing. If you're interested, hit me up. <laughs> right. And then those people that are interested are like, I'm, that's exactly what I'm looking for. They book a call with you. Then you can just set them through your machine and go through the process so that they can get that outcome. And you can keep dialing in and optimizing that system so well that, you know, as soon as you send somebody in there, they will get the result. Now you can actually scale it. You can step out of the business. You can put somebody in there to coach for you. You can put someone in there to take sales calls for you. You can put someone in there to handle everything for you. And then you can just look at it from a higher level because simplicity is what's going to be able to get you to grow because there's less moving parts. Imagine if you were trying to grow a massive business where you had to make a curriculum for each and every student. What if you had, again, what if you had 533 students, you're going to make 533 curriculums or would you make one and then only bring in the people that want that thing? Okay. So this is how you charge more. You become the best at one thing that a lot of people in your niche need. You get really good at duplicating that result. You charge more money for it 
but you still deliver more than you charge. So if you can get somebody to learn how to sell their, their beats as a producer, and they can make like three grand a month. How much is that a year? If you charge them just three grand, it's a no brainer. And if you get three people to say yes to you at three grand every month, you just made nine grand. This is very conservative numbers too. You can keep growing this and let's just say you get better and you start getting more people results and you increase your price to 5k. Well, now you just need three people to say yes to you and you just made 15 grand instead of selling something for like, I don't know, like a hundred dollars an hour. Like how many physical hours do you have to put in to be able to hit 15 grand? And even if you did that, you would still have to show up because you're selling your time. Whereas if you have a systematic process where everybody can watch a certain amount of lessons, they do a certain amount of actions, you don't have to show up to make sure they do all that stuff. You can still charge them five grand, get them that result. You make a lot of money, they make a lot of money, everybody wins, right? So this is just another way to think about how you can charge for your coaching program versus just charging at an hourly rate. Hopefully you found that helpful. If you want to learn more about how to create a system like this, I'm going to leave a training down below and you could book a call with me. If you actually want my help to sit there with you and create this product and create your coaching program so that you can shortcut all this and be ahead of everybody else. I'll leave the link below to the free training and to book a call and hope that was helpful. Please hit subscribe and I will see you in the next video.